Hey YouTube, it's Tech Savvy Solution, and I'm here with not another video review on the latest and greatest smartphone, but rather a change to Windows 8, which is the latest operating system made by Microsoft, and I decided to go ahead and put it on my computer and show you guys what it's all about. This is tech related, so what the heck. Alright, so these are the steps that you'll be encountering once you freshly install it onto your computer, and after your computer restarts and everything. So the first thing that you're going to encounter is personalized, and you're just choosing a color scheme for Windows 8. I'm going to go ahead and choose... Uh, how about this? Or this. This looks pretty cool. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and choose next. And then here, you have to connect to your wireless. So I chose UIUC Net, because I'm here. And connect. All right, and then after that, you get to choose more about uh, the settings that you're gonna configure your computer to. Um, I'm just choosing express settings just for the sake of time, but you can also customize, but I'm not going to do that. All right, and then you have to sign into your PC, which I have next. Then you also have the option of configuring an email address in which you can synchronize all of your settings and back up your account and such um, to your PC. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that in which you have the option to do. And then they're going to go ahead and finalize your settings. And Windows 8 should start up shortly. Alright, and now it seems that Windows is cleaning everything up and doing the final setup for the Windows 8 experience. Okay. Alright, so we have this new start screen, and here we have, for the um, computers that don't have a touch screen, we have a scroll bar on the bottom so we can navigate through this. And it looks like everything that we ha have like that is important to us like mail, calendar, photos, weather, etc. Um, they're all arranged in these in this kind of um, tile format. And then of course we have our most important programs up over here to the right. And so yeah, I'm, you know, this is quite aesthetically pleasing for a start screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take you back to the desktop experience. I know maybe this is not what you want to see, but I just want to just get a look at the difference between the Windows 7 desktop experience and the Windows 8. So I'm running Windows 8 Pro right now on a Sony VAIO, and when I bought this VAIO, it came with um, Windows 7 Professional, so just take a look at the difference. This bottom bar is translucent, and everything seems a bit more simple, despite having all of these this entire array of programs and makes it seem um, really cluttered, but that's just that's um my issue. But anyways, um, here we have the desktop view, and notice that gone is the start button or like the start menu that you can click on over here in the bottom left. Instead, you just have an array of shortcuts that you can pin to this bar or this dock. And of course, here we have um something that's reminiscent of Windows 7. We have, again, our date and our time, and then have our Wi-Fi, sound, and the other programs that are running. But one thing that you notice that when I put my mouse over to the corner, see if it comes up again. All right, to the lower right-hand corner. I believe you can also do it on the upper right-hand corner as well, pretty much any corner. Um, you have this little, like, shortcut navigation bar and what you can do is one get a quick view of like your wi-fi connectivity your battery and the date and time and such but then also um search share start which is again the start button isn't over here but over there and then your devices or your settings so let's go ahead and click on settings now here is what um, looks a lot different from the traditional desktop setting of Windows 7 in that when you have your settings, you have this really nice, again, like 
just easy on the eye um, settings menu. So we have control panel, which is over here. And again, you can notice that um, before in Windows 7, we had um, this, this bar looking kind of like shiny, had a little rounded edge to it, but here everything is a little more toned down, um, more solid colors, just to give the appearance of making it more simple, more Google-like, I guess. But here's the little disappointing aspect uh, once you get to the settings. Um, you notice that in the start menu, everything was pretty radically different and it looked very modern. But once you get to the actual like in-depth part of the settings or of the menus of Windows 8, then it goes back to the Windows 7 layout, which, you know, it might be good for people that aren't ready for the entire transition to Windows 8. but um, it seems to me it's not a full transition to the modern era or design. It's kind of a hybrid between Windows 7 and Windows 8. So with here, um, for example, if we click on hardware and sound, we have the menu that um, we're all used to in Windows 7. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and get back to our shortcut navigation bar again. Your devices, I have none connected. Share. Nothing can be shared from the desktop. I haven't dabbled with those settings yet, obviously, or those features yet. But let's go ahead and get back to the start screen, which is what you guys have all wanted to see. Alright, so I took some time to dabble around with the system, and I'm going to go ahead and show you um, the important applications, which might be all the applications of Windows 8, and give you a quick walkthrough of pretty much all of them. So if you notice my little oxymoron there, a quick walkthrough of all applications, is that possible? Don't think so. It's going to end up being one of those in-depth reviews again. So again, I want to remind you, as I did in the beginning of the video, the first um, like 11 seconds of it, um, bleh, please feel free to go ahead and click on the time links in the video description below to jump to each individual application so you don't hear me rambling for the entirety of this video save you guys some time if you want to see a specific application. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and just walk through everything and yeah, pretty much get to whatever I can and then also double around with some of the settings of Windows 8. So the first application that we have here is the mail application. So when you first try and click on it, what will happen is um, you're going to be asked to sign into your Microsoft account. Now, I don't want to give you the misconception that you need to have a Hotmail address solely. So what you do is, um, what you can do is have a Microsoft account that includes your Gmail accounts or includes your other accounts that are not Microsoft related. So what I did was I created a Microsoft account under my Gmail address and then I'm able to draw from all the other third party, uh, third party companies and applications and put that into a Microsoft account. So it's kind of like what Google's trying to do with their like synchronization of your calendar, your mail, your contacts and such, but they don't Microsoft doesn't force you to have just a Microsoft account. Um, you're allowed to have your Gmail, which I have right now. So in this mail application, we have of course just our mail over here. And then when we click on one, we have the actual message onto the right. And then we have again our little menu here, Gmail. And I like this whole application layout much, much better than having to access it through the browser, which can be like kind of tedious having to open up Chrome and then um, getting to have to like having to access Gmail through like typing in www.gmail.com and such. Um, and then here we have access to your other Gmail accounts if you have multiple ones. So yeah, we go to add or compose, sorry. We, this kind of interface. So we have like two and then all of your other traditional settings, send or close, save or delete, delete. So yeah, that's pretty much what you have in store for the mail application. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the start menu and so you can see, or you can't see, but you heard I clicked or tapped on my shortcut key for the start menu 
and that happens to also work for the start screen in Windows 8, so you have that option as well. Now the cool thing is, is once this updates, it should um, in a few moments, or it did before I went into it, but you have live tiles which display actively display um, previews or information relating to the application and it shows it on the top. So I guess it's not going to do it for mail, but it did it before. So with people, if we go ahead here, it takes you to your contacts. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if I want to show you all of my contacts, but they're there and you saw a brief clip of that. Messaging, I'm already signed in and created my Windows account here. Again, it might take me to my contacts, so I'm not going to show you that. But um, go to our calendar, and as you saw before, I have a flute lesson coming up tomorrow, um, and it shows that on the live tile, so you can go ahead and see that even before you access the application. So with here, we have um, the month view, it's all of my stuff, my finals, my rehearsals, that was November, and then on the bottom, I'm looking for like the week view, but let's go ahead and click on the day and see if you have anything. Oh, it just takes you to the option of creating an event, and this is the interface to do that. You can also go to your other email address to go ahead and create the event under. Mm, don't save. I want to see if you can get you to the week view of it. Doesn't look like it's doing that for me. Nope. Click on an event. You have the options of editing it. Such. But I'll probably figure that out sometime along the way. But here is a like quick overview of what the calendar application has for us. So let's go back to the start menu and take a look at photos. Photo application, you have your previews of all like the photos from either your library on your computer or SkyDrive photos, which is the online storage, cloud storage for Windows, Facebook photos, Flickr photos, and also if you want to add a device to import photos, you can do that too. This is just a default image on the background. I'm sure you can change that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. And then of course, a shortcut to a slideshow if you want to show your friends all of your photos, which I'm not going to do right now. Next application that we have is finance, and you need to obviously be connected to the internet to view this. Um, once you do, it'll go ahead and update you on all the latest stories and stocks. So let's wait for this to start up. Alright, so I like how they have the picture as um, the main feature of each story. So it's not like text and here's like a little picture over here that I have to like click to zoom. They have the entire thing as front page and it's really um, popping to the eye. And they don't do that for all of them so they have they change it up a bit but I like how the first page is always an image. And as you saw in the photos application, image, like the entire background um, was very visually appealing. So we have this whole like slide left to right thing. Gone is the whole let's scroll up and down in order to see our content. They've shifted it from vertical to horizontal. So the next page we have again the graphs of stocks and such, and then the news about the stocks, and then the watch list of stocks and such. And then over here. We have just another view of it. Too bad we can't rearrange, really. Trying to see if we can. Eh, no. Um, rearrange the order in which they appear. But, alas, we just have this bland menu over here. You'll see in the other application, I believe it's news application, in which instead of having these bland, this bland list, you have um, pictures as the background. Like today, instead of having that um, solid colored background, you have a picture as the background. And I think um, Windows should incorporate that um, throughout all their applications, including the finance application, to make it more uniform and more visually appealing.
but back to the start menu. Okay, next application is weather. And we're looking at the weather for London, United Kingdom. Let's go back to what we had before being weather. Okay, so this is when you open up the application, this is what you would see normally. Okay, and you can also scroll left to right with the arrow buttons on your keyboard. So over here we have, sorry for making you dizzy, um, we have the weekly forecast over here, and then on the next page, hourly forecast map. So if we click on this, we see a satellite view of what's going on weather-wise. Exit out of that. Historical weather, we have a graph, rainfall, sunshine, and let's go ahead and take a look at the settings for that. Nope, these are the settings. I um, forgot which one we could take a look at. Nope, that's just historical weather. I had I was under the impression that we could change what we want to view if we want to view the weather for um, just just the day, but I guess not. We just have this historical weather view graph wise. Again, you can change what you want to see, but that's pretty much it on the weather front. No pun intended, again. So, for the next application, we've seen Window uh, Internet Explorer, I mean, so I'm not going to go into that. But how about, let's hit up the store and see what's up. So we have here categories being Spotlight. Oops. Oh, I guess in order to scroll, you have to do that. But we have Spotlight, Games, Social, Entertainment, Photo, Music Video, Sports, books and references, books and reference, I mean, news and mother, health and fitness, food and dining, lifestyle, shopping, travel, finance, productivity, tools, security, business, education, government. And then if we click on the minus sign again, we have this kind of overview look. hoping we could rearrange those. Perhaps you can, I just haven't figured it out yet. But that's what you can see using that. And then now I want to go and look at this a little more. So if we go ahead and click on an application that we want to see, let's do News Republic and see what that takes us to. We have Overview, which we go up and down again, and then Details, Reviews, And then this is free to install. So once you have signed into your Microsoft account, you can go ahead, sign in again, and then we can go ahead and install that to your computer. All right, but what I'm gonna do now is go back to the start menu. On the next application we'll look at is Maps. For that to load up. And just comments on my first look at this whole Windows 8 interface is that, um, no, let's just not do that. Um, is that I kind of, I feel like I'm kind of using a tablet kind of rather than desktop computer because the, the revamp of the entire like Windows 8 interface, um, not regarding the desktop portion of it, but just like the whole start screen and how we have different apps actually designated apps for mail gone is the whole outlook interface gone is the whole having to type in your browser gmail.com and such but having that just gives me the kind of feel that hey i'm actually using something that could that is like reminiscent of like my tablet my android tablet i feel like i'm actually using like a, a really modern operating system which was surprising because i was like oh no windows is you know just behind the rest of the pack but hey not so much. So you can, see, you can see it's pretty smooth. I'm going to try and see if I can use the gestures on, nope, on my trackpad. Usually um, I can do pinch to zoom gestures on it, but it's not really working for me, so I just have to use these. And then how do the arrows go? Nope. The physical arrow keys on my keyboard don't really work with this application, but 
you can see that it's pretty smooth. There's there's very little lag, if any, and scrolling is nice. It's not choppy. I'm running on a Sony Vio. Has um, Intel's i3 core processor, so it's it's um pretty fast, but it's not the fastest of the bunch. Cause they have i3, i5, i7, so I'm on i3, so it's still pretty good. Windows 8. Okay, uh, maybe we'll see if we can search for something here. So I right clicked onto the map and it gave me this menu, so we can show the traffic. And that's pretty much an instantaneous view, which is great. Um, map style, we can choose road view, aerial view, and it takes us to kind of like a satellite map. which shows Chicago labeling the city, if you don't know what you're looking at. And also individual cities, cities and road names. My location, directions if we need any. So what about Chicago? Illinois to Houston. Texas and go see what it brings up cool so we have here the routes and directions and then number labels for all of the directions that you go to Let's see if we go to we click on number 11 automatically scroll left to right like that to view all of our directions. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this. I kind of, I'm really used to the whole scrolling up and down for a directions list, but you know, that's how it goes, I guess. So that's a quick look at the maps application. So we exit out of that. SkyDrive is online storage. I haven't really touched that or worked with that before, so I'm not going to go into much detail with that. All right, next. Trophies, what? Bing Sports. Still to wait for it to start up. That's just a little bit of lag, but I'm being really impatient about it and just like clicking around. So the overall experience is actually pretty good. So I won't be too picky on that. Better than Windows 7. Oh, now it's hanging up. Okay, so again, the first screen is this big image. Picture is the center of attention here. And we have the article. If we click on that, it'll take us to the actual article here. I'm guessing. Nope, there's nothing else that needs to be loaded, but it's only one page. And then you have just a summary, or not the summary, but the article. And let's go back. Okay. And then if we scroll to the right, we have news, which again, more articles, pretty fast load time. And like how it's all like that, it takes advantage of the most green real estate. And again, you're not, you're not um, scrolling up and down, you're scrolling right to left, which is pretty cool. The next schedules for the games. Favorite teams that you can add. I'm not gonna add mine, but that's a pretty sufficient look at sports application. Next, we have news. And news is kind of the same layout again. You have the image in the front, top story, and then you have all of your different categories here. And then when I was what I was talking about with the minus sign is that like if the news application can have these kind of icons, why can't the sports application or the finance application? I like this kind of interface better. Maybe um, Windows will make it more uniform in their future updates. Let's go back to the start menu. And then after that, so let's go over to Bing search. So I searched for tech savvy solution. So this is start page first, and what I really like about Bing search is that you, you click on one of those little squares, should take you somewhere. Where is it? Okay. And it has like a quick fact about something related to the picture. So to surprise prey, larvae disguise themselves by adorning their backs with the bodies of prior victims. Oh, 
that's not really a pleasant thought, but you have that, which is pretty cool. And then it's a really minimalistic interface, which I like, and that's prevalent throughout the entire Windows 8 interface. Very simple, trying to be as user-friendly as possible, even though sometimes these gesture shortcuts can be a little confusing to the first-time user, but, you know, they're, they're making a, an effort, and I think it's paying off. I really like this interface. So if I search for tech-savvy solution here, then we'll come up with a search list. Again, gone is the whole thing of scrolling up and down to see your search results, but you have this whole left to right feel. It's really cool. Um, let's go ahead and go to my YouTube channel. And this is the kind of disappointing thing. It takes you to your desktop, your Chrome browser in order to view it. I think maybe they should come up with a Chrome tile or something, but here it is. We have my YouTube channel and you guys should all check it out. But anyways, that's pretty much how it goes. And then you'll notice that the whole scrolling bar again is kind of themed to look like uh, the Windows 8 scrolling bars. But the whole lag, um, it's, I haven't noticed, this is probably a little irregular because I have a lot of other applications running at the same time, but you can see that it's not entirely smooth on an i3 processor, just FYI, but it should all be cool. So. And then let's go back to the start screen and go on to our next application. So it looks like our next application here is travel. Haven't really used this in maybe any operating system, but we have a travel app. Let's go ahead and see what it's all about. So again, the image in the front, pretty much the same format throughout, feature destinations, just giving you an overview of all the tourist spots that you might want to visit on your free time. Articles and such, it's pretty cool. And let's see what they have for the options. It looks like See, like, I don't like how the interface for the minus sign is, it's it's not really uniform. It's like, so here we have just, like, these tile-like images, or tile-like, I don't know, like, forms, um, but they don't have any images like they did in the news application, and it doesn't even look like the one in the sports application, so I think they should really uh, make it a uniform look that would benefit not maybe not benefit as much but might make it look uh, more streamlined just my opinion so if we go back to the start menu let's go to our next application which is games and you'll notice that it takes us to xbox games so even if you don't have an xbox they're going to call it that so the point of this is to try and integrate everything microsoft into one kind of location or one kind of count so that you have your xbox games on your computer you have your xbox games on your xbox you have your xbox games on your windows phone and just fyi i ordered one so i'm going to go ahead and take a look at windows 8 on that but you're trying to it's trying to be like um cross platform uh cross platform similar or like man i'm like running out of words to describe it but trying to make it as uniform as possible through different platforms. That's probably a better way to say that. So that's what you have with this whole um, games deal and with the email, the whole Microsoft accounts, with their calendar, your contacts, etc. It's all like that. Hi friends. Okay. So I'm gonna exit out of that. The game library is relatively small, but it will grow. So should be looking forward to that. Next we have our music. And let's go ahead and listen to, oh yeah, I was listening to this earlier, but we have our, all of our music over here, not all of them, but just like the stuff that you've been listening to recently, and then now playing, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm really liking this. It's cool. So you can like go like that to 
scroll between song. And then here are kind of like suggestions of what you might want to listen to or recent, or not recent, but like popular tracks, One Direction, I don't really listen to them, but um, yeah, Bruno Mars, we have the Xbox Music Store, and then most popular Gangnam Style, of course, is on the list. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. I kind of wish that they had a pause button like they do like right here for the play button. If they had it right there, it would have been more convenient, I think. But anyways, you have this as your Xbox music app. Again, note the word Xbox. Next, we have video. Xbox video again, kind of like the same deal. And we're going to go back. And then this application that I just downloaded, I don't know why it says pending, but it's probably doing some work. I'm not going to deal with that right now, but let's go back to the start screen. It's pretty much a look at pretty much yeah all the applications that we have here. Of course, these aren't all of my applications that I have like period on this, but um, here are some shortcuts to a good number of the applications that I have installed on this computer as well. And then now I'm going to switch over from reviewing different or like looking at each different app and show you some like, I guess like shortcuts or gesture UI elements of this. I already showed you before the whole corner thing of getting to search, share, start devices, etc. But you also have this where you drag to this corner and then you have, so sorry, you drag to this corner and once you drag up, then you have a list of all of your recent applications. If you go to the upper corner and you drag down, then you also again have a list of all your recent applications. And it seems like they're all running somehow in the background because once you click on one of them, for example, it takes you directly to where you had left off. So it's kind of like a multi the multitasking interface of like Android, for example. Let's go ahead and see. Um, let me show you on my phone. So I don't know if you can see this right here, but I have it's kind of like the same interface. Let me put them side by side. But you have this whole like scrolling list of recent applications, so it's trying to be as modern as possible with that. I kind of, I really do prefer that to, let's say, the desktop where you have all your running applications as icons here. That's you know, having this is a lot more appeasing. So another thing that I want to show you with this is that, let's say we have the weather application over here. And we want to open up another application on the other side of the screen. So what I do is I go up to the top and I, you see that like little handprint. I go ahead and drag down, put it to the side, and then go ahead and go here and open up the second application that I want to be viewing. So how about uh, news? You can go ahead and do that. And you can see that it brings it up this application on this side, this application on this side, and you can decide how much screen real estate you want for both of them. I've been trying to put it straight through the middle and it doesn't seem like it wants to do that for me. So within here you can still interact with your app and here you can still interact with your application and it's it's kind of like they switch form so it's not like we went back to the desktop like that. It's not like if we had so Word documents. Um, let's go to here really quickly. Um, it's not like the desktop interface where you have to go like that, and then with Microsoft Word if you wanted that on this side. Wait for that to start up. Actually, I'm gonna wait. I'll just push a tab over here.
So it's not like you have to go like this and kind of like finagle around with it and and be like, well, I'm, I have to try and like scroll like this so I can get the center of this and oh, I can't see like this part of the application, um, but I can see this part. It's not like that because if you go to again weather side by side with news again. It gives you as it gives you the full view of what you can see of the application. Like full view is in, um, it takes you kind of to a mobile type of version of it, a smaller version. But you see everything. You don't. It's not like this is blown up and then you have to like scroll side by side to see this like little portion of it. I don't know if I'm making sense, but um, here it's kind of it, it's kind of like optimized more for you to view it. See what I mean by like how they rearrange the news stories like that. So if we go back to this and then the moment that you slide it over to the left like that takes you to this kind of mini interface that you're still able to view like the article like this. Well, I guess you have to go back to the larger view, but you're still able to view the list of everything and you don't have to be like trying to zoom in, zoom out, or like focus on a part of the window that you want to see. Hope that made sense, but you'll notice that when um, you start interacting with this whole split screen interface. Now I do want to note that if you do this whole split screen thing, not entirely sure that it'll work in the desktop mode um, with those applications. Let's try with um, iTunes. Yeah, it just takes you to desktop. So if you want to run two type of like desktop applications that don't have an icon on the start screen, like they don't have a designa designated like app for it, if you try and run those two split screen, it's going to take you back to the desktop and you're going to have to use the traditional way of run of like split screening two apps, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm pretty sure in the future upgrades they should optimize that so that the split screen option would be available to all applications. That would be difficult to do, but that would be nice if it happened. So that's split screen, and let me show you some of the other settings that we can go to here. So first, if I minimize this, we can rearrange our apps like so. It's pretty cool. And then also, if I go to settings, Go to change PC settings. Now we have this awesome settings menu right here, and it's really nice. It's user friendly. Like I like solid colors and big icons and images. It's great. It's really easy to look at. We have a lock screen. Nice. We can change the images like that. And then the start screen which is what we saw before. We can change your background like so. How about we change the color? This is the options. These are the options that you had in the beginning when we first started, but again, you, you did have the option of changing it if you wanted to. I'm gonna change it to purple. Trying to decide which graphic I like. This looks meh, meh. Okay, I'm I'm gonna stop now. Just change it back to this. Okay, so you notice that um, you can also personalize like so, and it's pretty instantaneous. It's not like oh, let's restart the computer or something for a theme to take effect. No, it's pretty um, instant like that. Do all these settings. And I'm not going to walk through all of them, but just give you kind of a list of what they are. You can also use the physical uh, navigation buttons to go through them, enter is to select them, and such. So let's go back to our start menu, and as you can see, what I had before oops, is instantaneously applied. And then how about let's go ahead, 
go back here and something about the settings. So for tiles, you can also show administrative tools. Should come up in just a moment. They're pretty much like tile shortcuts to like settings, options. See, that's what it is. And I think it kind of clutters it up, so I'm going to say no. But you have the option too. And then over here, again, quick sound options, brightness, notifications, power, keyboard, of course your Wi-Fi. You have airplane mode if you need it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for what I have for you in um, taking a look at Windows 8. It's a pretty quick overview. Not quick, but it's pretty a broad overview. I went through a lot of applications, but um, again, I hope you guys took advantage of the timelines in the video description because it does get pretty lengthy with all of my videos. But yeah, if you have any suggestions or comments, um, please do let me know. Um, I really enjoy your feedback. So if you want to see more of this stuff, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on the next video review or tutorial or news announcement. Thanks, guys.